The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, indeed I, have appointed with him Aholiab the son of Ahissamach, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we read Exodus chapter 31. The conclusion of the instructions God gives Moses concerning the tabernacle. These instructions have gone on for several chapters, describing the tabernacle itself and its furnishings, the courtyard, the clothes for the priests, because God wanted to dwell with his people. But God is holy, and so the people needed a way of connecting with God. And this is what God was seeking to achieve with the tabernacle that could be built in their midst. There would be opportunity for them to come, to pray, to worship, and to offer sacrifices, both of burnt offering, of peace offerings, and of sin offerings. And a key part of this would be the high priest, who would be the go-between between between the people and God. And so the high priest was very special. All of these things model something that is happening in heaven. In heaven we have the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, who offered sacrifices on our account, we're told in the book of Hebrews, in the true tabernacle that is in heaven, offering his own blood as a sacrifice for sin. And so many, many details concerning the tabernacle are actually fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. In chapter 31, we find that God has not only given Moses the instructions, but he has prepared the artisans, the skilled tradesmen, who will be needed to construct the tabernacle and its furnishings and its equipment in a way that will bring glory to God. Two particular people are named, Bezalel, the son of Uri of the tribe of Judah, and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan. Dan would end up being the northernmost tribe, and Judah would be on the south. And so these two men would integrate together this tabernacle, which would be a dwelling place for God among all of Israel. We continue reading in verse 7 of Exodus 31. That they may make all that I have commanded you, the tabernacle of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, the table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the laver and its base, the garments of ministry, the holy garments of Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister as priests and the anointing oil, and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, Therefore it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person will be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. 
And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. And may the Lord bless these words. So, while the priests were the ones who would officiate in the temple, it was not the priests who actually built the tabernacle, but rather to particular men that God named were to lead up the construction of the temple, one from the tribe of Judah, Bezalel, and the other from the tribe of Dan. And we're told that God had given them specific abilities, filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. So this is a very broad set of skills that this man had. But there was another who would work with him, and then a whole team of people who would actually carry out the work. And so the construction work would be done in an orderly manner, under the leadership of Bezalel, but involving many people doing it all. Now we've seen the tabernacle itself, a tent, five metres wide, five metres high, and 15 metres long, partitioned into components with a curtain, and the tent constructed of, on the inside, a wooden frame, and draped over the wooden frame, fine linen, artistically woven in gold, purple, blue and scarlet, and then the goat's hair covering, and then the ram skins dyed red covering, and finally the badger skins on the outside. So there were four layers in its construction. It will be built in a courtyard of hangings, and in that courtyard, when you came in on the door in the east, you would come to the altar of burnt offering. The priests would then take your offering and offer it before the Lord. Most of the offerings were conducted just at that altar. But morning and evening the priests would go into the holy place at a time of prayer. And whenever they went in and while they did their business, they kept their hands and feet clean at the laver. They went in to light the lamp in the evening and in the morning and the evening to burn incense before the Lord. And that incense would go through the curtain into the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was. The covenant that God had with his people was represented by the Ten Commandments. The people had said they would keep those commandments. And the mercy seat was a lid over the box that held the Ten Commandments. And that is where the people would find mercy from God. That is where they prayed for the Lord's help and the Lord would deliver them help. All of this would be maintained from the free will offerings of God's people and a temple tax where the rich could not pay more and where the poor could not pay less for this was a house of God for all of Israel not just the rich or the, the powerful. God is God of all. But the second thing that's mentioned in this chapter is the fact that not only did the children of Israel need to maintain a focus on the temple, but their lives were to be ordered around God through the keeping of the Sabbath. They could work on six days, but the seventh day they were to rest. This is an opportunity for them to meditate on the Lord, but there's no command to worship God particularly on the Sabbath day. It is God's purpose that they should rest on the Sabbath day. If they did not honour the Sabbath, then God's judgment would come upon them. The whole purpose of the Sabbath is to remember the creation. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And now, while the tabernacle and temple have been taken away, the nation of Israel still remembers the Sabbath and seeks to keep it holy. And so after all this, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments written on two tablets of stone by the finger of God.